Hello. So, I'm going to talk to you today about this book, uh, a little small part of this book. It's uh, A Guide to Inclusive Therapy by Bill O'Hanlon, okay? So, first of all, what is inclusive therapy? Um, well, I'll give you the three basic methods of inclusive therapy, and then you can kind of get a feel for what it is, because I don't exactly have a good definition. Um, <laughs> method one, you give the person permission to or permission not to have certain uh, experiences or be something, okay? So you can have whatever feelings or thoughts or not have whatever feelings, thoughts, fantasies that you like. Um, number two, second method is that you can suggest the possibility of having seeming opposites or contradictions coexist without conflict, okay? Um, for example, his example here in the book is, you can tell me and not tell me about the abuse. You can tell me if you like, and you can not tell me if you like, all right? Number three, the third method, allow for the opposite possibility when speaking about the way it is, was, or will be, okay? You can say, you'll either get better or you won't, for example. Those are his examples. And from that, I'm going to basically talk about the first one in section 1.1 of his book. Where are my notes? In section 1.1, 1.2, and 1.3, it's give permission to, give permission not to have to, and then give both permissions at once. So basically, Bill, the author, explains that it's okay to have or not have any sorts of feelings or thoughts. Here's my example, or a few of my examples. It's okay for me to miss or not miss my ex-husband. It's okay for me to think of him or not think of him often. Um, it's also okay that I wish I didn't exist or if I wish I existed, that would also be okay. And it's okay that I don't have, or I do have, much sexual desire. So I've given, the, given myself permission to do all of these things. And I've given myself permission not to do all of these things. And I've given myself both permissions at once. Alright. Um, Bill helps me out in why there are conflicts and why you think that these things are wrong to feel. Um, with um, injunctions. He basically says that um, we, people typically, may feel like we must or we must not feel or think a certain way due to these injunctions. An example of an injunction would be, one that I've been personally dealing with, is you can't love two men at the same time, you know, two partners. You just can't love two men at the same time. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, you can because I'm doing it. I'm experiencing those feelings. I love both of them. I would love to be with both of them, but I can't, and so I'm trying to let go of one and trying to build my life with the other. Anyway, that's an injunction. Uh, another is, you should always try your best. That's another injunction um, I've been dealing with. Um, and the reason why the injunction, you should always try your best, bothers me is because I have always tried my best. I really try so hard to do everything right. Um, for example, if I, what I would like to do is be able to record this on, you know, with my good camera, with my good microphone, you know, do everything the best way possible. But guess what? I'm recording this on my iPhone because it's simple and it's fast and it's stress-free for the most part, you know, so because it's making me happier to not do my best. So in this case, it's okay. I don't have to do my best. Or, for example, clean in the kitchen. All right, I'll clean the stove off and I'll put up the dishes. I don't have to clean the fridge and do the floor and the baseboards and and wipe down all the counters and organize. You know, I don't have to do all that. I'm good with just put the dishes up, for example. You know, you don't have to do that. Um, so I'm working on that. <laughs> because when I don't do my best, or for example, like right now I'm doing this on the iPhone, I feel a bit like a failure. But I'm working on it. Um, so, from these permissions to and not to, I've learned that it's okay to feel however I, I may feel or think or fantasize or whatever, but it's not okay to act on all of these feelings and fantasies and everything. Um, good examples with my ex. I miss him. I love him. 
but I'm building a life with my boyfriend. So, if I were to go and try to have a relationship with my husband too, my ex-husband, that would make both of them feel really bad and I would hurt people in the process and therefore I don't feel it's appropriate. So that's, um, you know, I, I can't act on that, but it's okay that I feel it. Um, you know, um, so that, I mean, that pretty much sums it up, but that leaves me with a couple of questions though. Why are these thoughts and feelings okay? Why has Bill told me that these are okay? Whatever I think is okay. Why is it that that's okay? And um, who decides whether or not, in fact, they are or not okay? I mean, is it okay to really think everything you want to think? Feel everything you want to feel? Um, he says just don't act on everything because that might not be appropriate. <laughs> Um, my hypothesis is that humans tend to have many irrational or non-comprehensible thoughts or feelings and that maybe that's just normal. So maybe it's normal to have completely irrational thoughts. Maybe that's just normal and that's why it's okay. But then you go, then this leads me to the next question. Is it not okay to be abnormal? Why wouldn't it be? All right. So, um, <laughs> those are just a few of my thoughts from that chapter on permission to, permission not to, and then giving both permissions at once. So, according to Bill, what's Bill's last name? Bill O'Hanlon, it's okay to do all that. And I think advisable by him. So, see you later. Bye-bye. Let me know what you think. And let me know if you are dealing with any personal injunctions of your own. I'd love to hear about them. I can't give you advice, but I'd still love to hear from you. <laughs>